had no idea how much my smartwatch was affecting my smartphone addiction. I think I've been using smartwatches for about 15 years. I recently cleaned out my closet and I found some old ones lying around. I mean, it's 15 years if you include the Fitbit tracker, which was my first technical smartwatch. I'm including this in the smartwatch category because it was connected to my phone via an application. So the Fitbit was revolutionary for its time. Um, I know looking back now, it looks a bit silly, but there was five dots that you were supposed to get. And once you reach those 10,000 steps per day, it would flash. And it was a bit of a gamification. And uh, I know when I first got it, I was super excited. Back then, I was more into fitness than I am now. So now it'd be a little bit frustrating to use it. But back then, I loved it. I mean, when I went out for runs and I reached those 10,000 steps and it buzzed, I was so excited. I felt accomplished and it motivated me to keep working out. I think back then it was also a sleep tracker as well. So that was interesting to see the sleep cycles and to really monitor from a health perspective. But again, I was using the application a lot and I didn't realize how much I was relying on my smartphone and my fitness tracker at the same time. My smartwatch journey continued with the Fossil Q. Now, this one is a bit different. It looks like a normal watch, but it is connected via an application to your smartphone. And when you receive notifications, the hands on the clock would spin and buzz, and it would notify you to check your phone for a message. I like the look of this watch, but I didn't really like the fact that I couldn't see which notifications I was getting. So I only kept it for maybe a year or so, and then I switched to my favorite smartwatch of all time. I think in around 2015 or 2016, I switched to the Pebble Round Time. Now, I still consider this the best smartwatch of all time because of its slim design and it was way ahead of its time. Uh, I love the notification, the, the font, everything about it was just so avant-garde. I mean, it was re really revolutionary compared to the Apple Watch, which was soon released afterwards. I like the Pebble because it was more affordable than the Apple Watch for sure. And again, I just like that it was developed and separate from the Apple ecosystem at the time. So I liked that it was independent and they had really different applications compared to what you would find on other smartwatches. Unfortunately, it was not water resistant or I should say humidity resistant. When I went on a trip to Singapore, it was very humid and it corroded my Pebble watch and it was very sad to let it go. After my Pebble died, I switched back to Fitbit and I got the Fitbit charge. I liked it because it monitored the heart rate, it also did the fitness, you could choose the activities you were doing. And I still think it's a great smartwatch for those of you who want to monitor your activity level, sleep, and it's quite affordable. Um, the application's well designed. I really like the Fitbit atmosphere. Um, it even helped me predict my pregnancy before I was pregnant because I saw that my heart rate had gone up and I didn't take a pregnancy test, but I said, hmm, something's not right. It's either I'm sick or I'm pregnant. And I was pregnant. After the whole era of 2020, I switched to the Apple Watch. Um, primarily because I'm heavy into the Apple ecosystem. I had a MacBook, I had an iPhone, and I wanted everything to be connected and centralized. So I figured why not try the Apple Watch. Uh, the big downside of the Apple Watch was, of course, the battery life. I mean, charging your watch every night was a bit cumbersome. Um, the plus side, I did like Apple Maps on my Apple Watch because I'm visually impaired. I rely a lot on Google Maps or Apple Maps. And with the Apple Watch, the Apple Maps directions would show up on my watch. And in fact, it would buzz and notify me via my headphones where to turn. So I didn't even need to look at it to navigate, which was great. I really appreciated it. But the negative side of having an Apple Watch... Uh, 
one of the biggest negatives was it was always buzzing. Even if I modified my notifications not to notify me on my Apple Watch, I still got distracted by notifications such as uh, reminding me to get up and move or, I don't know, even looking at the weather and my heartbeat. I would just end up scrolling through the apps in the Apple Watch and then wind up back to my smartwatch to check health data and then end up in another application and doom scroll for hours. I started feeling phantom buzzing on my wrist. So I would check my wrist. I wouldn't have any notifications and I would double check my phone because I would swear that I had a notification and it was really making me anxious, especially when I had connected it to my uh, work messaging on Slack. That was a horrible mistake. Never connect your smartwatch to your work. I mean, I was getting notifications all the time. It was making me super anxious. Every time it buzzed, I would be like, who's notifying me? And I realized that it was a really unhealthy relationship. When I switched to a more digital minimalistic lifestyle, I didn't really equate my smartwatch as a problem. So I been using it up until recently. I think about a month ago, I realized that, huh, I'm not using my smartphone. So why am I still using my smart watch? I think I just did it put two and two together that it was enabling my addiction. And even though I wasn't using a smartphone, I was still scrolling on my smartwatch. So I made the decision to switch back to a classic watch. In fact, I chose uh, the Casio because it's digital, it has light, it's very simple, uh, and I like the look of it. I like the classic retro look. So after switching a month ago, I have no regrets. Um, the phantom buzzing on my wrist lasted about a week, I think, in total. I don't feel it anymore, so I'm glad that side effect is over. And I find myself not really using my watch except when I need to know the time. So I'm saving more time by having a dumb watch. There are some things I miss about having a smart watch, but then I'll just have to relearn those habits. For example, the weather, I had it on my smart watch. So I know how to dress in the morning and now I actually have to look outside. Big change. Um, I miss the heartbeat monitor, I think. I'm just someone who's obsessed with data, so having more data was entertaining, but realizing that I don't need that data necessarily. I'm not somebody who's working out all the time. Um, I think I need to learn a more simpler life. If I feel like I'm having heart issues, maybe I should go visit my doctor. And I have a young son, and I want him to see that... A watch is to tell time and not an entertainment device. So I know he was watching me using my smartwatch and it made me feel bad that he's growing up in a world where a watch is not necessarily a watch. And same for the phone. So another reason why I switched to a more digital minimalist life is to lead by example. Um, I don't want kids growing up now to just be enveloped in the digital world. I still think it's important to have a childhood, explore things, and not just be glued to a screen. I mean, do as I say, not as I do. I mean, a lot of us are addicted to our screens, and we don't see how that's impacting others. And uh, I'm going to try to do better for him and myself. And um, yeah, switching my smartwatch was another step into the right direction I feel for my mental health and anxiety. And hopefully it's going to help me relearn some <laughs> some basic habits like looking at the weather or just using my watch for time that's it that's all it needs to be it's just a watch i hope this video was a bit more insightful on my journey towards a more digital minimalism lifestyle and uh, thanks for watching see you soon